Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Edgerly, and along with my teammates, Melissa Chen, Johanna Arias, Ben Gasley, and Jan Heindel, we're going to tell you about our project, an electronic differential for multiple electric motors. Today we're going to talk about a differential, what it is, what it does, and how it relates to our project. We're going to tell you about our theoretical basis. We're going to move right on into implementation, including design. We'll tell you about our test methods and results, some administrative material, and then we'll show you a video to prove that it actually worked. Some of you may not know exactly what a differential is or what it does. I know some of us didn't at the beginning of our project. To take a look at the picture, it's the big red ball in the middle of the rear axle. It's sometimes called a pumpkin because it's about that big and it weighs a lot. A differential divides up the power from the motor to the wheels. If you're driving straight, it divides up the power equally. However, when you turn, the outside wheel travels a longer distance and therefore a faster speed than the inside wheel, which is traveling a shorter distance and a slower speed. A differential is absolutely essential for modern vehicles because without it, the inside wheel will slip or the outside wheel will drag. Either of these conditions can create an unsafe driving experience, as well as without a differential, you will have excessive tire wear. The purpose of our project is to develop a power distribution system for a four-motor electronic vehicle. Most manufacturers these days, when designing an electric car, try to cut costs. So they simply replace the gasoline engine with a large electric motor, coupling it to the transmission and the differential in exactly the same fashion. This is extremely inefficient for a number of reasons. Number one, electric motors don't require transmissions. They have a linear power curve through a much wider RPM band than does a gasoline engine. So you don't have to shift the gears to keep it in its optimum power band. And number two, a large electric motor weighs a lot and takes up a lot of space. In addition, it's very expensive. If you split it up into numerous smaller motors, you will save room, lower the weight, improve performance, and you will also improve the weight distribution. For our project, we implemented four motors, one on each wheel. And then we created a power distribution system to control the speed of each motor to mimic that of a regular differential. We started with a theoretical basis, which is simply a picture of a car. As you can see, we put some lines through the center of the wheels perpendicular out to a specified distance. These lines represented the radius of turn that the inside and the outside wheels will travel. To find the actual radius of turn for the vehicle itself, we simply averaged these two radius. And then, using geometry, and the physical dimensions of the car, namely the width in between the wheels and the length in between the axles, we created the steering angle. Then we implemented speed, which is the throttle that the user wants to go at, and through some mathematical calculations we arrived at these two equations, which are the velocity of the outside wheel and the velocity of the inside wheel. In this fashion, these equations will be the basis of our algorithm, which we will implement on a microchip. This relates the steering, throttle, and the vehicle characteristics in exactly the same fashion as a mechanical differential. This is architectural design for a project. We start off with the battery pack, which is the one that gives the power to the two dual air bridges that we use. At the same time, it gives power to the microcontroller through a voltage regulator that we design. Each of the dual air bridges controls four motors. Each motor has its own sensor, which goes back to the microcontroller. We also have a RC transmitter and the RC receiver, which sends user input to the microcontroller, and from the microcontroller goes out to the servo to do the steering of the car, and that data goes back to the microcontroller one more time. This is part of our sequence schematic. This is a low-level uh, design of our project. Our main component in here is the microcontroller, which is a big 18 that we take. Uh, this is powered from a voltage regulator that we designed going from a 9.6 volt battery pack down to five volts. We also have a buffer, which is the one that distributes the control signal <coughs> that is sent from the microcontroller to the two of the dual A bridges. Each of the dual A bridges controls two motors. The first one controls the front motors of the car, and the second one controls the rear motors. We also have a wheel encoder for each of the motors, which basically the wheel encoder is a digital IR sensor that reads the RPM of the, of the wheel every time that it spins. And that output goes back to the microcontroller. We also have a servo, which is the one that does the steering for the car, doing the right and the left turns of it. 
We have two buttons, one of them, this one is the hard reset button, and the second one is the start stop button. And finally, we have the ICD2, which is the one that does the interface between the microcontroller and the computer. Now the microcontroller we use for our project is the microchip PIC 18F4431. We chose this for several reasons. One, because it was recommended to us, but after our own independent research, we found it ideal for our project. Yeah, the most important thing was that it was easily programmable. Microchip provides a vast C library, so it was very easy for us to interface with all the onboard peripherals. It was also relatively low power, which was good for our, um, our mobile platform. We didn't want to draw in too much power from our batteries. It was fast enough for our project as well. The max speed, which we, we set it to, was 8 megahertz, and this proved more than ample for our project. There are also numerous input and output modules, uh, the most important of which is the, are the four pulse width modulation generators. Now this is key to drive four motors independently, otherwise you couldn't mimic the four wheel with the four motor differential. There were also six input capture units, and these were used to read the wheel encoders that I'll talk about in a minute. And these, these uh, gave us the RPM signals so that we could adjust the differential depending on steering angle. There are also a lot of other general purpose input and outputs that we could use for buttons and LEDs and such.